did Lathrop get started? Let's find out today on All Things Lathrop. All right, welcome everybody. So this is obviously, we're staying on the grounds of the city of Lathrop, but there's actually a lot of history to the city of Lathrop. Right here to my left and to your right is actually a monument uh, signifying the origination of the founding of the city of Lathrop. Uh, across from me, which you'll, you'll see uh, here in a few moments, um, is a set of railroad tracks of which this monument describes um, is actually something that was called um, before the city of Lake that became the city of Lake that was called Wilson's Station. Um, Wilson Station was um, put in place originally by a man named Leland Stanford as a way to bring rail uh, across from the Sierra Nevadas all the way to the port of Oakland. Um, eventually passing through the city of Lathrop. Um, but to give you a brief little snapshot of the background and how this all took place, Leland Stanford with his wife, uh, Jane Elizabeth uh, Lathrop Stanford, came from all the way from the state of New York to California. And over the course of time, uh, Leland Stanford, along with three other individuals um, in which those four became known as the Big Four, uh, formed a company called the Central Pacific Railroad. Um, and so they began to um, incorporate their vision of um, it bringing rail across from the Sierra Nevada, as I mentioned, all the way to um, San Francisco. Um, and so with the Central Pacific Railroad, a few years later, they joined forces with the, um, with the uh, Central Express Pacific Company, I believe, and then later joined forces around 1868 of uh, Southern Pacific Railroad. And it was about this time, 1868, roughly 1870, uh, that they began to lay rail all the way from the Sierra Nevadas um, and also Utah and bring it through the Central Valley. Um, about this time, however, they began to work with the city of Stockton, um, about 1868, roughly, um, to try to bring rail through the city of Stockton. However, at this time, the city of Stockton capitulated. Uh, they took their, their time and basically they didn't respond to the request of Leland Stanford in time to bring rail through the city of Stockton. So Leland Stanford, in his frustration, um, established and installed rail outside of the uh, city limits of Stockton and through the area of which we now call Lathrop. Um, originally it wasn't called Lathrop, but it was simply a terminal uh, that that um, was called um, Wilson Station, forgetting already. And, and so Wilson Station was simply a terminal in which rail um, came from the Sierra Nevada all the way through the Central Valley um, and eventually connecting to a point in which we call Mossdale. And we'll see that in the next, um, in the next um, episode. And so there is a lot of rich history of the city of Lathrop that a lot of people um, don't know, but it all started with somebody's vision and that vision was um, instilled and incorporated through Leland Stanford who had a great vision uh, to bring rail from, from way across the country as part of something that's called the first uh, transcontinental railroad and just span almost 2,000 miles to bring rail from Utah to the Sierra Nevadas all the way to San Francisco Bay, uh, specifically um, the Oakland port. Um, and so um, also another little snippet, Wilson Station, um, which was simply a terminal that housed the railroad at this time uh, directed by Leland Stanford. Um, 
that that company that Leland Stanford headed up actually decided to then build a town. So his company, the Central Pacific Railroad, began surveying a portion of land of which I stand upon today um, and then named that town. He, Leland Stanford named that town in honor of his wife, of his wife, Jane Elizabeth Lathrop. Okay, and so that's a really brief snapshot, if you will, of the background of Lathrop's really rich heritage. Also, one little tidbit I'd like you to know is Leland Stanford, who not only founded the city of Lathrop, but also founded a great university that a lot of people may not be aware of, but of which we call Stanford University. You probably didn't know that, but again, Lathrop, the city of Lathrop, although it may be relatively small in size today, is definitely very fastly growing and has a very rich heritage. Again, that started by the vision of Leland Stanford. Thank you. All right, so today we're standing, right behind me is a, a bridge called Mossdale Bridge. Uh, what's significant about this bridge, it's actually named so after an individual, uh, William Captain William Sims Moss. Um, and it was captain because he was actually captain of several uh, ships before he came uh, to the state of California. Him and his wife came to the uh, state of California from Illinois um, and saw, saw, liked what they saw and decided to actually start a business here and purchase some ferries. Um, if you can see behind me, the bridge looks like so because actually at one point in time it actually made way or it moved to make way for ferries that passed through the bridge. And so Captain William Sim, Sims Moss liked what he saw and actually purchased several ferries at the time starting his own business and continuing on that journey of being a captain um, in which those ferries were renamed Moss Ferry. Now. What's also significant about this bridge, Mossdale Bridge, it was actually the connecting point from what we were talking about in the earlier video that Leland Stanford brought rail all the way from the Sierra Nevadas and through this area that we now call Lathrop. But Mossdale Bridge was essentially the connecting point from the rail all the way from the Sierra Nevadas going around Stockton through this area that was originally called Wilson Station, now renamed Lathrop, and eventually connecting to Mossdale Bridge and all the way downstream to the Bay Area at the Oakland Port and beyond. So there's a lot of rich history, a lot of uh, huge legacy that both Leland Stanford and Captain William Sims Moss laid for us fellow Lathropians. Another little tidbit is Captain William Sims Moss actually purchased about 10,000 acres east of the San Joaquin River in which it's now called Moss Dale or simply put Mossdale. So behind every word, there's, there's uh, certainly a lot of rich history. Um, and that is certainly the case when we look at the city of Lathrop. Mossdale, again, coming from a man named uh, Captain William Sims Moss, um, and the city of Lathrop as a whole being founded by an individual who had a vision, Leland Stanford. And so when we look at these two individuals, Leland Stanford and Captain William Sims Moss, they had a vision and they didn't just let it sit there, but they then acted upon that vision and executed. And we now enjoy the benefits of that vision today and here in the city of Lathrop, where it's fastly growing. Um, it looks beautiful, um, centrally located to the Bay Area, uh, to Yosemite, to Lake Tahoe, everything. Lathrop is fastly growing. It's beautiful. Um, hopefully one of these days it'll be a one-stop shop for all the city of uh, Lathrop and its residents. Um, and having said that, we want to transition now into interviewing some local residents who have been in the city of Lathrop for um, a very long time, long before even the city became incorporated in 1989. So we'll see you on the other side. All right, so today we're continuing the discussion on the history of Lathrop, and we have a very special guest, or should I say guest with us here today, and that is Diane Verrata and her husband, Mike Verrata, um, who have been amongst the families here in Lathrop um, a very long time, certainly well before the city got incorporated in 1989. Uh, so Diane and Mike, thanks for coming on All Things Lathrop. Well, so uh, one of the things, um, you know, as we were sort of discussing um, before the uh, podcast is uh, something that I think a lot of people will um, 
not be aware of. I certainly just, you know, recently came uh, to understanding a little bit about this thing called Tokyo Joe's. So uh, what can you tell us about Tokyo Joe's? What is it? Was it a theme park? What was it exactly? Maybe you can give us some history on um, what I what I believe to be is certainly a landmark um, in the history of Lake Throat. Well, it first started as a fruit stand. My dad was a truck farmer. Well, he farmed around here too on this land, uh, but um, grew vegetables. But then after that, he yeah. uh, trucked vegetables to the markets, some in Modesto. He got some from French camp. He was Their family was one of our growers. Okay. Um, he went, brought them to Oakland, to Stockton Market, um, delivered to a lot of grocery stores in Modesto. But and we grew a few of them, but a lot of our growers were in French Camp. And mm -hmm. at the uh, later years, he started a fruit stand on Highway 50 there, uh, between Louise and Lathrop Road. It's called Tokyo Joe's. In the, at those days, it started as Highway Market, wasn't it? And um, then it became Joe's Joe's Place, huh? There was another name. Oops, so that okay. Um, Highway Market. It was. And from a fruit stand, it grew into a little coffee cafe. And then he um, had a, a, it grew into a gas mart. We added the gas pumps there. Okay. Then diesel had been in the back. We moved our warehouse from home uh, to the pro property here behind the fruit stand. And it was a big dance hall. Okay. It ended up where people from the Bay Area all over even came in the fog. To the old, uh, they sat on bales of hay and on there wow. at a band every weekend. So that was quite the uh, quite the place to go to. For yes, that was the, many people here say that's the best the entertainment later wow. had. <laughs> that's pretty good. So from a fruit stand to uh, later down the line became a gas station. Yes. Okay, and so uh, for those of you that may know about it or may not know about it, uh, the if I'm understanding this correctly, Tokyo Joe's is now the present day Joe's Travel Plaza. That's it, yes. Okay. After he sold it, it came Joe's Plaza. That's that's very interesting. Uh, do you remember what the original attraction uh, for your family and coming from Nevada to uh, Lathrop was? Well, I guess because they were kind of raised here. Oh, your, your folks were raised. Oh, I see. Got it, got it. So he was coming, he was coming back to be central. He's coming from Bellevue. Tell here, got it. Um, is there anything that you would like to uh, speak to that maybe I haven't asked you about, or you know, maybe your audience may not even know, uh, as it pertains to uh, the rich history of the city of Playthrough? Well, uh, I guess that helped build Lathrop too. Uh, we had uh, many penny candies, and all the youngsters around the area there would come several times a day. Even the, the Cotton's family thing would come to uh, get our goods there. We had a lot of wine and uh, beer and wine that dropped in a lot of. Okay. Um, and then the, uh, produce, of course, unless the. Um, they were famous for their hamburgers and chilies, too. A lot oh. of it had an egg farm. Okay. A lot of big uh, old people of Lacer, too, they came from that. Got it. That and um, this was the Conn family, you said? That was ours. Oh, that was yours. I'm sorry. I said that. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Highway Market. <laughs> okay, okay. How are you? Jones now. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. I'm sorry. And then my uh, weekend, they had the big uh, dance hall going. I heard about that. But then when the gas station opened, there we got a lot of people, the truckers and all the highway trade came. Okay, okay. So that that's how, too, I guess we became famous because we had a little bit so business right there got it it was easy access so you guys were definitely if not the highlight of the town back in the day part of it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no that's really cool so your your last thing uh, for those of you that don't know on the yet uh, that are tuning in today um obviously your 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 name today by marriage of to your husband is horada but uh what was your father's uh, or your maiden thing takashita takashita Wow. So, you know, I don't know how much information is out there on the web about the Takashita family, uh, but uh, that's that's really good to know. That's really awesome. 
Um, any final thoughts, uh, even from yourself, Mike? Uh, you know, I know that you grew up in French camp. Yeah. Um, any final thoughts that you guys would like to uh, uh, speak to or maybe throw out some little uh, gold nuggets of history on the city of Playthrough? Uh, or, you know, something that our audience, uh, you know, may not have even known even after hearing everything that we've talked about today. I'll play a little half. Oh, yeah, that was amazing. There was like a big glass company there, LOF Club. Okay. Where the uh, Tesla thing is now. Yeah. That right. That's right. That right was a big because that was from LOF. Okay. So that was a huge. Yes. It uh, messed fertilizer. Okay. Oh, yeah. Which is now called Simplot. Yes. Right. I read about that, so I was prepared to. Now that's the big thing again. <laughs> okay. So it was called Best Fertilizer. Yeah. And today, for those of you who are tuning in, that's now called Simplot. Yes, so it was big time. It's the same company that we're talking about today. So those are the two main... The big glass company. And a little... Colony drivers and... Yeah, the LOF is, uh, is owned by... Was it Kraft or something? Oh, right. Now it's Kraft Heinz or something. I don't yeah. know all that. It was taken over by a uh, Kraft company or something. Whatever the fellow's name is. Yeah. Well, definitely the more jobs that we can get to the city of Lerta, the better. Um, you know, I'm sure, and even today, I'm sure it's still by and large a, a bedroom community in the sense that there's a lot of people that live here but work in other cities. Um, and so um, I'm hopeful that we get to the point where this is sort of a one-stop shop city yes. where we have everything, not just good food, but good paying jobs as well. Yeah. And so that's, that's definitely a goal. Well, I want to thank you, uh, Diane, and also her husband, Mike, uh, today for coming on the uh, podcast. Uh, for those of you listening today, I hope you found value in this podcast. And if you found some value, hit the like button, subscribe, share this video. Uh, there will be more, many more episodes that we uh, begin to talk about um, as we discover uh, something that we're calling All Things Like Throat. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, too. All right, so today we have another uh, special guest uh, joining us as we uh, journey through the history of Lathrop, and that is none other than the one and only John Smith. John, thanks for joining All, all Things Lathrop today. All right, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. So, um, so let's go ahead and get started and kind of dive into the things. Obviously, the, the theme of this episode is the history of Lathrop, so I kind of want to dive into that specifically as it pertains uh, to, um, to the Smith family. Um, so maybe you could uh, tell our audience about the history um, of your family coming to the city and what that was like in the beginning and the early days of Lathrop um, from your from your point of view. Uh, well, uh, my grandparents came here uh, from Oklahoma. They traveled in the back of a, uh, an old Ford truck. Late 15s, early 16s. But the one beauty about Lathrop it was never uh, what society sees it as... Uh, separated you know we didn't run around uh and felt like what the world is is doing today so i'm trying to separate us Lathrop has always been we don't care who you are yeah but be good be a neighbor you know if i need a cup of sugar i can knock on your door and ask it was a very family oriented community very uh awesome. so uh our am pm on louise avenue i-5 yes yes it used to be john serpa that was a gas station with the shop my dad was a mechanic there uh when i was a baby baby i did not know so that's that's yeah. that's, that's that's why we're having this podcast <laughs> to talk about the history of lake Trip. um going from an uh the version of lake Trip being unincorporated prior to 1989 to um after 1989 or even today what are some of the biggest things that stand out in your mind that has changed when people needed you you still did it you got yeah. you were that's who Lathrop, uh, I truly believe Lathrop is, is, is that community uh, that has compassion for their neighbors. And yeah, that was the original. Now, now having uh, um, Deloso Farms, you know, they, they brought the park and really have, uh, you know, brought a lot of attention to, to Lathrop. Yeah. Uh, which is a, it's a, a great thing because it's, it's a nice not having to drive an hour to a place to entertain your kids. Yes. Is there anything uh else that you'd like to share with our audience something that we may not have even talked about or uh yeah gone through today don't believe in the, the negative hype stay with the positive 
uh, that's kind of my back to the character. Yeah, I like that. That's good. Character is it's all you got. Yeah. Do you stand up or and look out for your neighbors or do you? Yeah. So, uh, I agree. That's good. And Latham's the neighborhood. Yeah. Still neighborhood. Still community. Still a little town. Yeah. We might be big in population by people, but if you look at it by size, we're a small town. Close knit, and that's that's good. And that's yeah, the way. So. Should always be, hopefully. Well, John, we appreciate you coming on the podcast today. I hope I helped. Absolutely. It's been been very informative, very beneficial to hear, uh, you know, about the history of even your family coming here, uh, what everything was like back in the day from uh, a local resident who's been here amongst uh, the many families that that have been here for a very long Mm -hmm. time. So definitely thank you for allowing us your, uh, your time today. Uh, I hope I helped. I, absolutely. I, I feel like I was all over the place. No, that's all right. <laughs> we certainly asked a lot of questions today. So, um, yeah, thank you for sharing all of that. And to our audience, thank you for uh, for tuning in today. If you found value in this uh, podcast today, hit the like button, subscribe, uh, share this video, um, and tune in next time for the next episode of All Things Lathrop. All right. So today we're continuing the conversation on the history of the city of Lathrop. Um, and we have a very special uh, guest joining us today, and that is none other than the one and only Mark Elliott. Uh, Mark, thanks for joining us on All Things Lathrop today. No, thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And so, Mark, you know, as we were talking a little bit before the podcast, I know there's, uh, you have a lot of credentials, um, as as I would put it. Um, you know, you have, you, you joined the city council back in 2016, uh, spent some time serving on the planning commission. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Commission, um, and then also currently um, as well serving uh, on the Lake Mantica uh, Fire District Board of Directors. Uh, you've coached the Junior Spartans football team for well over 20 years, I understand. Um, and then also professionally, uh, you're the Deputy Chief Probation Officer. Um, and so um, having said that, I guess the way um, I would put um, Mark Elliott in, in terms of um, the audience is number one the way I see there's you're definitely a leader um, you know judging from um, all the time that you've spent in serving uh, the community um, you know very freely giving of, of your time and then you know like we said coaching the junior Spartans for well over 20, uh, 20 years on a volunteer basis uh, not a paid position um, and so obviously from that you I can tell that you definitely have a heart for the youth. Um, and so having said that, take us back from the, uh, from the lens of the Elliott family to the early days of Lake Thur- Uh Tell us what it was like growing up in the city um, when your family originally came here. Um, and then maybe if you can uh, tell us what the original draw to the city was uh, for the Elliott family. Yeah, no, thank you, Paul. Um, I am, uh, uh, my dad, Alan Elliott, lifelong uh, Lithopolian, I guess you can call us. We've been here uh, fourth generation. Um, and uh, my mom, uh, Yvonne Miller, um, the Elliots and the Millers, uh, has been here uh, since the early 1900s. Um, so what kind of drew the Elliots and the Millers was was work. Uh, the Elliots, great-grandpa Elliot, Niall Elliott, came from Wisconsin, him and his brothers. Um, Niall and Artie and Leland, there's, there's several Elliots. And... Um, which are also distant cousins of Brock Elliott, which is uh, okay. a person that Brock Elliott uh, School, um, Brock Elliott School, and first yeah. person uh, from Antica to pass away, you know, the Vietnam uh, War. Um, and then the Millers, um, they, uh, you know, William Hunter Miller, Miller my great grandfather, um, uh, owned a store uh, on on the front on 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 I call it Front Street, but that's Seventh Street, mm-hmm. and uh, it was a hardware store, and. Uh, <laughs> businessman and you know went through the depression and lost the hardware store uh so that's kind of what brought them to lathrop um was work okay. and they established their families here got it so um what would you say um whether it, it ties back to your upbringing or maybe just a personal drive or something that you know, sprung up in your own heart where do you think that comes from that drive to um both both lead and also serve at the local level where do you think that comes from yeah well i think it's in your blood a little bit i mean if you look at if you look at the rock or or the memorial rock at valverde park you know there's key people that that have been on that but everybody pitched in everybody served um 
I love football, and I, I coach youth football beginning with the Rebels of Manteca and, and the Manteca Chargers and then, then the Lathrop Spartans. Um, you know, my kids, our family went through Pop Warner uh, from the Saturdays, the games, to practice it every night. Um, so it was kind of a family uh, choice. Um, but overall, I, I think uh, um, most families are going to uh, – get involved and in one way is through community service and um i've uh i've kind of enjoyed uh seeing the team uh, the, the town grow and yeah. so uh, a natural growth is to get in, in involved with park and rec um uh, uh as your kids are young and and le- understand that uh from there would be the planning commission could you get to see what's going before the city council but also the future plans of lathrop I did 12 years of that, learned a lot about politics and how to um, uh, Advocate. <laughs> understand. And yeah, then, yeah. and then, you know, city council, I, I, you know, I never got elected. I got appointed a couple of times, but uh, a lot of, poli- a lot of, a lot of, a lot of pressure there. We still serve nonetheless. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, you get recruited after you, you, you're part of Lathrop, yeah. you get recruited for the fire department, but it's a different, um, it's a different goal, but you're still dealing with people and you're still dealing with service. So. Got it, got it. Uh, but that's kind of a summary of of why I, I, I volunteer. And, you know, all of our, my parents, my parents' parents have been raised that way. Got it, got uh, it. And, and, and my kids. Um, so that's where you say it's in, it's in the bloodline. It's in the bloodline. And, that's and, good. And I can name, you know, I don't want to screw the names up, but sure. five, ten families that are on the, the dedication rock that are, are raised the same way. Put yourself first. Uh, you know, put putting others first and yourself second and just being selfless. Uh, but more importantly, uh, just being there for your neighbor and, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a prideful town to, to come from. It's, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of great people, uh, had grew up in Lathrop and, and have really impacted the area. That's good. That's good. Well, I know we've covered a lot, you know, um, in this, in a short amount of time, wanted to give you an opportunity, um, maybe to, uh, speak to our audience or even our fellow Lathropians. Is there anything that you would say? Um, or yeah, anything they just want to talk about that we may not have, uh, covered here that you feel it is noteworthy, um, whether it's, you know, to respect of the history on this, uh, the city of Lathrop or yeah, just to the city of Lathrop in general. Yeah. No, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, you know, the idea of, uh, the city of Lathrop and, and coming from Lathrop is, is just to be, uh, uh, you know, prideful, uh, get to know your neighbor. And, um, you know, uh, when people make mistakes or when people, fall down, just help pick them up, you know, forgive, forgive one another and, and, and just be neighborly. Um, there's going to be mistakes. Uh, we, we, you know, people coming together is going to be difficult at times, but, uh, I'm just really happy to be a, a lifelong, uh, from Lathrop and, and, uh, I, I, I love the, the small mentality of, of the town and hopefully, um, you know, we can continue to grow, uh, you know, in a positive balanced way. Uh, with some control of of uh, uh, of uh, who comes and, and um, you know takes over industry here, I don't know, but yeah, yeah. you know that's kind of what I want to say is you know it's it's a great opportunity. Uh, and thank you for the interview. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Mark, for coming on. And yeah, you've you heard it from a local who's uh, you know like you said early on in the podcast, uh, his grandparents uh, that preceded him have come to the city of Lathrop in the 1900s. Uh, man, so yeah, you've you've uh, you've definitely heard it from a local. Um, you know, put your put your community, put your neighbor first uh, for yourself, uh, both lead, but also um, have that servant mentality. Um, and yeah, definitely thank you, uh, thank you, Mark, for joining us on all things Lathrop today. And so, if you found value in this uh, video today, hit the like button, subscribe, share this video to uh, to a friend or to a family member, um, and we'll see you on the next episode of All Things Lathrop. Thank you. Take care. Welcome to another episode of All Things Laked Up. Uh, we have a very special guest uh, joining us today, and that's Susan Deloso. Uh, Susan, thanks for coming on the podcast today. Thank you. I uh, certainly definitely appreciate it. You know, like I said before the podcast, we have a crazy busy schedule. So I want to say thank you for um, allowing us to uh, talk to you today. Well, I love the idea of All Things Laked by the way. Absolutely. Thank yeah, you. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Good one. And so today's topic, uh, as we've been discussing, uh, is on the uh, history of the city of Lathrop. We sat down with a number of of local residents, um, very strategically starting with uh, Diane Harada, um, and then also John Smith. Um, and this morning, as I mentioned earlier, 
uh, sat down with Mark Elliott, mm -hmm. and then also finally today yourself, Susan Deloso. Um, and so the way I see uh, today's podcast is a uh, very, very special, um, not both from a, a strategic standpoint in, in terms of the history of Lathrop, <clears throat> uh, because the way I see it, um, again, so we started off, we sat down with Diane Hirata, who is uh, the daughter of Tokyo Joe's, the uh, famous Tokyo Joe's, yeah. who which uh, the establishment is called Joe's Travel Plaza today. Um, and then John Smith, who talked to us, uh, one of the things that he mentioned is about the close-knit um, nature of the city of Lathrop and his residents. He talked about, you know, how you can just go to your neighbor and ask for like, you know, back in the day, a cup of sugar and they would be uh, more than willing to loan you a cup of sugar. And so, um, and then Mark Elliott, we sat down with him today. And one of the things that he mentioned, uh, the highlights is uh, really putting in thy neighbor first, um, you know, having that kind of servant mentality um, as a way to bring everybody together. And so, um, wanted to sit down with you today. Obviously, there's a lot of history with Deloso Farms. Mm -hmm. As people well know, you know, uh, you know, her last name Deloso. Um, you pass by the freeway and you see that great big sign, Deloso Farms. So there's a lot of history in Deloso Farms in itself. And so I want to cover the um, history of Deloso Farms, okay. also the history of the city of Lathrop, and then also um, the history of the concept, if you will, of River Islands as well. Okay. And so the way we structure this interview is kind of, you know, talking about um, history uh, with the local residents. And finally, uh, you today, um, the way I see this interview in a nutshell is there's a little bit of the past, um, the present, and the future kind of wrapped up in the Deloso name. And so um, I'm sure there's, I mean, there's a lot we can talk about, but we'll try to keep it, you know, a reasonable uh, amount of time. Um, definitely in under an hour. So, you know, just let you guys know that it won't be too long. Um, but there's uh, a lot of ground to certainly cover. So on that note, I want to um, talk to you um, about the origination or the history of the Deloso Farms. Okay. Um, maybe you could speak yeah. to that. And yeah, yeah. sure. And on that. Yeah. And actually, so I was actually in town when I met my husband, Ron okay. Deloso. So I was uh, developing what was called the Gold Rush City Project. Yes. Remember that name? Yes. So <laughs> way back in 1989 yeah. when the city first incorporated. Mm -hmm. um, and then Ron and I met and we opened the farm to, we met, and then together we opened the farm to the public. So prior to mm -hmm. that, it was um, Ron and he's third generation, my husband's third generation. Okay. His grandfather came from Italy, brought two brothers over. They started growing aspar asparagus, okay. um, bought the farm in about 1930, and at that time had no idea that I-5 was going to go through. So to have it be in the best location for an agritourism operation and a, a family farm that's open to the public, it couldn't have been a better location. But at the time that they bought the property in 1930s, it was a very um, um, sophisticated course ranch. So you okay. see those red brick silos? Yes. And it says for, uh, saddle horses for sale? Yes. So it was a, a ranch and a cattle farm that basically... Um, they bought and then they turned it into a row crop farm and grew asparagus. Okay. And uh, my father-in-law took it over from my grandfather. So that was Alfredo. Took it, Rudy took it over from Alfredo. And then when my husband was about 25, he took it over from his dad and ran it. Well, he, he grew everything. He grew sweet corn. He grew tomatoes. He grew everything. And when we met in the early 90s, we decided it was time to open it to the public. So Ron always had an idea that he wanted to have a corn maze and kind of bring the public into okay. the farming business. So our first corn maze was in 1997. Mm. And we actually approached the Tracy Boys and Girls Club at the time okay. and said, okay, Tracy Boys and Girls Club, if you guys provide the labor to run it, we will build it, we will market it, we will take care of all the finances and we'll split the profit 50-50. So we opened it like that. We we're only open during the day. And we, um, we did well. And so after about two years, we signed a five-year lease with Tracy Boys and Girls Club. And Tracy, by the way, is because Lathrop, we were in the city of Lathrop, but my husband went to school in Tracy, and Tracy was kind of the town because Lathrop didn't incorporate until 1989. Yeah. Um, and then after one year of a five-year deal, Tracy Boys and Girls Club came to us and said, I'm sorry, but we can't do this anymore. We just don't have the labor. So at the time, we were beginning to be a real business. We said, oh, that's great. <laughs> so sorry, we broke that relationship. And then we went to our local nonprofits. 
And so we brought in the Boys and Girls Clubs, we brought in the Boy Scouts, we brought in the Rotary Club, we brought in a lot of different groups, and basically ran it with a lot of volunteer labor for a number of years until it just got too big. And then as it got bigger, we had to hire our own cashiers and kind of our own staff people um, to run it. But we still do have a lot of volunteers working there. Rotary in particular um, spends a lot of time every October with us. So, Got it. Yeah. So, and it's been, it's a labor of love. I mean, it's, um, we brought family members back and my brother-in-law, sister-in-law, two sister-in-laws are involved, our kids are involved. Yeah. Um, and at one point when we had all those volunteers, you could basically come on come in on a saturday and you see the mayor driving the train and the yeah, you know yeah. planning commission chair driving the hay i've seen some pictures yeah, yeah. So, yeah and yeah. so it's been it's, it's been great and it's it's been it's it's grown obviously yeah, yeah um but i think it's become a tradition that people have grown to love yeah and absolutely. we try to keep adding new things and we try to keep the farming history really strong so every time we add a new attraction we try to work it around well this is what we did as kids so as kids, we used to, you know, jump on piles of hay. Therefore, now you're jumping on a jumping pillow kind of thing. So I'm trying to tie the history back. So it was about 1997 you said that. The first first moved to 97, yeah. And so the, the drive, if I heard you correctly, was more of uh, trying to get the community and involved and connected? Yeah. Or, okay. So it was kind of a combination of things. Okay. Family farming is pretty tough. Um, there's, you know, as things have progressed, the cost of pesticides, the availability of labor, it's, yeah. it's very difficult. You finance basically your you leverage your whole whole entire a assets every single year yeah. and try to try to grow something that makes sense. Is it sweet corn this year or is it tomatoes? Tomatoes are hard because you are you know doing a contract with cannery and what if that doesn't work out? And so it's it's always very dicey to be a small family farm. You, I think you see in California a lot more corporate farms now. Yeah, 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 yeah it's true. Yeah, so it was a way to keep the farm going. So for a long time, we did both. We were farming and had had um, the public come in. Um, then we've got less and less farming, although recently we added some cherry trees and we planted those about six years ago. So this will be our second year of you pick cherries. And um, that's, that's been, you know, a great thing to keep the farm going as well. So. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So what what new developments? I know you guys are, I think, mm -hmm. pretty much every year, maybe maybe it's every year, you guys have, you guys open up the farm and, you know, you have like Zipline and like the yep. newest, sort of newest within the past, I don't know, maybe five years or so, the snow tubing, the uh, big yeah. hill. Yeah, so, so in 2009, we opened yeah. Christmas. So 97, we opened for October. 2009, we opened Christmas and we had a, had, let's see, I'm past tense here, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At a snow tubing hill, okay. we bought an ice skating rink, we had drive through light shit, we had Santa in the country store, we had all sorts of things when COVID hit. Uh, so we were able to open in October 2020 because just by the skin of our teeth, we got a special dispensation from the state. Oh, no, I see. Yeah, we had to have people wear masks. We had wow. to have social distancing. So you guys were a lot of strict guidelines. A lot of strict guidelines. And mm -hmm. invariably, we have a lot of the people who work for us are residents here in later. But mm -hmm. so I won't single, I won't single out any news. Sure. Invariably, um, one of our key staff members who runs Snow Hill, that's what we call it. Okay. She'd always get a cold. She'd get a cold. And so if she got a cold, her team of 12 people who work at, yeah. at Snow Hill would have to be quarantined. Oh. So what do you do? So, yeah. Yeah, so during COVID 2020, there was no way that we could open in December because there's no way that we could leave, we pre sell tickets in Scott simple when you can come down the hill. So we couldn't do it because you could have a whole team disappear and you can't replace them with another team that can push people sure. in the snow. Yeah. So 2020, we didn't open. And Christmas 2021, it was the exact same circumstances where where there's quarantine required. Yeah. So well, this last year in 22, with COVID, none of us have been totally gone and we probably wouldn't have had to do the quarantines. Mm -hmm. um, but it just became a little bit dicey to try to open it again so okay. we're still debating the future of whether we bring that back um but but we didn't do it this year as it pertains to the future of river islands and certain lake up as a whole uh what are some of the things that you might be looking uh forward to or i don't know maybe there's like any special announcements that you know our fellow lake lathropians mm -hmm. may not know of um is there anything that you could maybe give our audience uh, sure so um the community park right by the police station which is going to be a splash pad that okay. should be under construction this year, so I'm kind of excited by that. Okay. Um, we're starting our town center 
it, it's it's the plan should go in front of the, the planning commission in the next month or so. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an area that's 100 acres that will be primarily the kind of like the downtown, you know, walking retail type of type of use, and that's right by the baseball stadium. Okay. And the high school football stadium is going to be next to the baseball stadium. And that's going to be broken broken ground soon. Is that what you said? Um, yeah. Well, the football stadium has to be up by it next year because oh. you know our football our high school is under construction. Okay. Um, yeah. That's good. That's a good deal. There's, yeah, yeah there's a work in progress. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there anything else that uh, you would like to mention that might be noteworthy um, in the upcoming events? Um, yeah. Anything else that you'd like to mention? No, but I will say about growth, you know, there's growth and there's smart growth. So yes, yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Just grow, growing yeah. for growth, growing sake is not necessarily a good thing. So yeah. I think Blazer does it right. And I think we do it right. So that's absolutely. pretty good. Um, as a complete side note, we are doing an American Heart Association run. We're becoming their location for the region. Okay. So they're shifting all their operations over here. So that runs in September. On okay. Be Betty and Joyce Gatto, the store of trail, we're doing the ribbon cutting on May 11th over okay. that. And that will ultimately be a 16-mile trail that goes along the river around from River River. I've seen that. Yeah, that's a beautiful sign they have up there yeah. right behind the baseball field. Yeah. Um, so the mud run, that. you guys have not have. We don't anymore. do that anymore. I'm trying to wane. Yeah, the interest really? waned. Yeah, lost interest or people. People just, lost interest. Interesting. Yeah, I think. We've I thought that was like a big thing once. there for a few years. He's not once you've done it. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. I do it every year, but okay, yeah, it's fun. Well, but thank you for uh, coming on the I podcast. You doing this podcast, absolutely it's a big deal. Yes, I yeah. definitely appreciate. It. You know, it's uh, like we were talking earlier. It's something that's been on my mind for uh, a little over a year now, and so finally, thank I finally you know put uh, you know put it on paper and actually you know i'm doing it now so um for those who know this is the uh, last last end of the episode of the history of late up one of the uh, next episodes that we're actually going to be doing is on the economy okay. of late up and so i uh, certainly hope to um well as, uh, as far as regarding this podcast we're going to be interviewing local city officials but the next episode i want to sit down with some um people with uh, larger corporations here in late up the craft lines mm -hmm. the teslas um, you know, again, like we we're talking really for the purpose of putting the city of Lakethrop even more on the map. River Islands has obviously done a, uh, an amazing job of doing that. But, you know, the more we can do and even working together, uh, we will make this city, a, you know, a one stop shop truly for all of our Lakethrop residents. And that's something that I'm definitely looking forward to. Um, I, I mean that, yeah, in every sense of the word, I'm definitely looking forward to that. And yeah, Susan, I definitely appreciate well, you, you coming on the podcast today. Yeah. Absolutely. And so for those of you that have, uh, seen this video today if you found some value in this video hit the like button subscribe to this video share this video with a friend um, and we'll see you on the next episode of all things later thank you take care all right so we've come to the end of this video but you know I just kind of want to recap some of the things that we talked about as it pertains to the history of the city of Lathrop number one it all started with the vision and that was a vision of an individual by the name of Leland Stanford um, who had a vision to bring rail all the way uh, from the Sierra Nevadas connected to the Bay Area um, and unfortunately for the city of Stockton, because again, they capitulated, they were indecisive um, in their decision to give Leland Stanford um, a response to bring rail through the city of Stockton. Uh, Leland, Leland Stanford took, uh, took matters into his own hands and built rail around the city of Stockton and right through this area that we now know as a city of Lathrop. And so I'm thankful for that, you know, that uh, Leland Stanford uh, was decisive in his, um, in his response. He didn't capitulate, um, unfortunately, for the city of Stockton. Um, that was a blessing for us in the city of Lathrop and all the residents that we have today. Um, again, very, very fastly, very quickly growing as the city of Lathrop, going, going from a small farm town. There's still a little bit of ruralness in the city of Lathrop, but uh, there's a lot of growth happening um, and definitely smart growth for the better. Ultimately, as we were um, interviewing, interviewing Susan Deloso earlier, uh, smart growth for the benefit of this of the city of Lathrop and its residents um, ultimately to the point where it'll be literally a one-stop shop for its residents um, in terms of not just food but real good paying jobs that you know eventually we won't have to leave to the Bay Area uh, to get a good paying job and so the future looks bright the future looks very bright for the city um, you know and I just want to um, encourage you if you if you found value in this video again hit the like subscribe hit that like button subscribe to the channel uh, share this video with a friend uh, there'll be many more great videos like this the next episode that we're going to be working on is on the economy of the city of Lathrop and we're going to be interviewing not only the city officials but we're going to be interviewing 
um, headshots of you, or big honchos of some of the major employers in the city like Kraft Heinz, Tesla, um, and other, uh, other companies um, in this city. So stay tuned and we'll see you on the next episode of All Things Lathrop. <laughs>